Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 23. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to start the work on animating our sprites. I'm not going to recap the last episode because I kind of feel like we got to the end of a chapter and so if you want to know about adding actions to the game and adding attacks you can go back and watch the last three episodes. They are all on YouTube in this playlist. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing to notice, I just, uh, there we go, bring up the screen. The first thing to notice is that we've added a second image to our adventurer sprite. So if I run the game, um, I just open main.lua. If we run the game, we can see that we now have two slightly different adventurers moving around when we move our um, adventurer around the screen. And this is because we're going to use these two images to animate one image. Um, if we just bring up our adventurer again, we'll talk about what that means quickly. Um, really what this means is we're going to use this image as a sprite sheet. So a sprite sheet is just a collection of different images which can be used together to create an animation. So you can see we have um, two pieces of animation here. One frame which shows the legs uh, and arms sort of outwards and one frame where the legs and arms are by our character's sides. And if we play these two images one after another, uh, we should get an effect which looks like walking. So what we've done is we've loaded a whole bunch of, or oh, for now two, but eventually we'll have a whole bunch of images in one, or a whole bunch of sprites in one image, and that image will be our sprite sheet. And by loading them into the game and playing them in the correct order, we should be able to get some animations going on. In order to do this, we're going to add a new class to our game, which looks very similar to our sprite class. In fact, to the rest of our code, it will look almost exactly the same. So it will have the same publicly available methods on it, or the same interface. And what we should be able to do is wherever we're using a sprite, we should be able to swap in a sprite sheet if we want it to be animated. And uh, the place where we use our sprites is inside of our entity. So if we just take a look at our entity, we can see that in the draw method, uh, we call sprite draw, and we also use our sprite, I believe, when we create some collision boxes, uh, bounding boxes. So we use sprite.image. So in this episode, we're at least going to add the start of our sprite sheet. We might not get to the end of it, but hopefully we'll have some animation up and running before the end of the episode. So let's jump in and actually write some code. So in our graphics folder, let's create a new file, which we will call spritesheet.lua. And like all new files or new modules, we will start by creating an empty table called sprite sheet and returning it. And this will just give us something to hang, hang all of our methods off of. And then we'll add a sprite sheet create method. And because we're creating an instance of our class, we will just make another empty table and return it. And this will be the actual you know, this will be the actual sprite sheet. So the module of a class itself is a um, is like our template, and the instances are the actual versions of the objects we want to create. And because we want our sprite sheet to have the same interface or to basically look the same to any code that's calling it as our um, as our sprite, we need we know we need a draw method. So let's also create a draw method local draw equals function end and we'll leave both of these not really doing anything for now um, and then we'll jump into our player class and we'll switch out sprite for sprite sheet so local sprite sheet is equal to source.graphics.sprite sheet and down here where we create our adventurous sprite sheet, 
Um, instead, we'll do a sprite sheet dot create, and if we run our game, we will straight away get an error because our sprite sheet doesn't have an image inside it. And for it to behave the same as our sprite class, it needs to have an image. So we can solve that problem pretty easily because just like our sprite, we need an image to work with. So we'll take image path as an argument and we'll say instance.image equals love.graphics.newImage image path. Okay, now if we run our game, get another error. Ah, attempt to index field image a nil value. Entity line 96. Ah, that's because we're returning an empty table and we should be returning our instance. So now if we run the game, now it's complaining that there's no draw method, so we will add the draw method. So this is uh, sort of deliberate, by the way. Um, I find often the fastest way to create a new class, if you want to create a class which replaces or acts the same as an existing class, is just to start using it and see which errors you get. And then by fixing the errors, you're driving out exactly the behavior you need on your new class, but uh, no more. So it's a nice way of doing just enough effort to get something to work. So let's add our inst. Dot, sorry, start again. Let's add our inst. Dot draw method, and um, run our game again. Line thirteen equals expected near return. Ah, sorry, instance. Dot draw equals draw. Okay, so now our game is working, but our sprite or our player is invisible because our draw method doesn't do anything. But our game is working. So inside of our draw method, first of all, we'll need to take self because this is an instance method. And believe we need a view and x and y because this will behave like our sprite. In fact, we can check. If we open up sprite.lua, go down to draw, yep, self, view, x and y. And we can just do view because we know we're going to draw something so we'll need a view in context call and we'll need to pass in a function to actually do some drawing inside of and we will also still need our offsets because we want to draw each um, sprite from our sprite sheet at the same position so let's also grab our x and y offsets from here and to start with, let's just do a love.graphics.draw self.image and we can pass in x minus x offset. So let's just double check x minus x offset y minus y offset and zero. And if we run our game now, we have a... we're pretty much back to where we were. Um, the one thing we need to remember to do is to call set filter on our image and make sure our filtering mode is set to nearest nearest and that will just preserve our pixel art. There we go. Nice and crisp images. Okay, so effectively we've rewritten our sprite class, which uh, isn't very useful, so let's add some new behavior. Let's make the sprite sheet different to our sprite class. Uh, so the next job really is to chop up all of our, or chop up all of the sprites in our sprite sheet, so we're only drawing one sprite at a time. And to do that, we will need a few values. So let's pull those out. We'll need to know the sprites wide. So this will be instance.image get width. So this will give us the width of our image and we need to divide this by our sprite size. So we're going to assume all of our sprites are square to start with and we'll pass in sprite size as an argument. So just inside of our player module where we 
create our sprite sheet we're going to pass in 16 because our player sprites happen to be 16 by 16. Okay, so we need the width of our sprites, we or the number of sprites in our sprite sheet um, in a row. So the sprites wide, it would also be useful to have the sprites. Hi, do we need sprites? I'm not sure we need sprites high for now because we only have one row of uh, sprites. We can cheat slightly, and uh, eventually we'll probably have more than one row of sprites in a sprite sheet, and we can come back and edit our code then, but for now it should be a bit simpler. So we'll just use a for loop starting with i equals 1 and going up to um, total sprites, which is the same as sprites wide right now. And it would be useful to have somewhere to store our sprites so let's just say inst sprites is equal to empty table and then inside of this loop we can just do instance dot sprites i is equal to love dot graphics new quad. So if we remember back to dealing with our tiles, um, quads are ways of drawing part of an image rather than the whole image. And the advantage of using quads is we can reuse the same image um, many times, saving on some memory. So that's why we want to pack all of our sprites into a single sprite sheet and draw bits of them at a time using quads. So I'm just going to do this again because I've forgotten which arguments uh, quad needs to take. So quads or new quad takes x and y, which is the position of the sprite in the sprite sheet, a width and a height. So that's nice and easy because we can just use our sprite size, sprite size, and a source width and a source height. And for source width and source height, we can just to instance.image get dimensions. Dot image get dimensions. Um, at least I think it is get dimensions. Uh, we'll find out if it's wrong, and that should just give us the dimensions of our image. Now for our x and y values, we know that our actually let's just pull out a um, some local variables for these. So we know that x will be equal to i minus 1 times sprite size because we've only got two images and they are um, and one row. Let's just find our adventurer. Uh, the first one will be 0, 0, so somewhere up here. And the second one, so we want to pass in the coordinates of the top left corner. So 0, 0 for the top left corner of our first sprite and 0 or 16 0 for the top left corner of our second sprite. So all we need to do here is i minus 1 times sprite size. So the first time this loop runs x will be 0, the second time the loop runs i minus 1 will be 1 times sprite size will be 16 and y will always be 0 at the moment. Um, as I said as soon as we have um, more rows than just of just one in our sprite sheet. We'll need to revisit this, but for now um, this should work Okay, so I'll just run the game see if there are any syntax errors uh, there aren't So the next step is to actually use these um, sprites when we draw um, when we draw our sprite, and the way we do that is as well as an x and y value, we can also pass in a quad to describe the portion of the image we want to draw. So if we say self.sprites1 as the second argument to love.graphics.draw, we should now only have one image, and there we go. And now if I change the 1 to a 2, hopefully we will have the next image in our sprite sheet. And indeed we do. So the next step is to actually have the images change on their own and not have to come into the code and uh, change them. 
So we need to keep track of the current image. So let's say instance dot current sprite. And let's start out on one. And then when we draw our um, when we draw our sprite sheet, we'll use current sprite to index the quad that we want to draw. So just where we say self.sprites, we'll do self.current sprite. Good, still working. And so now we need a way of changing the current sprite once um, or changing the current sprite um, in order to animate our image. So let's make an update method. And like most update methods, we'll pass in the game state as the second argument. Uh, the first argument is just going to be self. Let's add it to our... Um, Let's add it to the instance of our sprite sheet. So instance.update equals update. And now we want to update our sprite um, every time update gets called, or update our, our current sprite every time update gets called. So we also need to know Since dot, uh, let's just say max sprites for now. And actually, we can work out max sprites. Max sprites will be equal to sprites wide. So let's just move this down here. Again, we'll update this um, when we have square sprite sheets rather than flat sprite sheets but for now our maximum sprites is the same as our sprites wide and so now when we update we want to say or to start with and again we'll build this up in small steps so to start with we'll say if um Actually, the simplest way of doing this is just self dot current sprite equals self dot current sprite plus one, and if self dot oops current sprite is greater than self dot max sprites, then self dot current sprite is equal to one. So we just if it loops, we just set it back to the beginning again. Okay, and now we need to call our update method, and this is where we are going to go into our original sprite class, and in here we can just add, uh, there's two ways we can do this, we can either add an update method in our existing sprite which does nothing, or we can check inside of our entity to see if the sprite has an update method and then we can call it. So this is because we want sprite and sprite sheet to be um, to be interchangeable. So our entity shouldn't really know if it's calling a sprite or a sprite sheet class. But just um, for now, I think we'll actually say if sprite or sorry, rather if self dot sprite dot update. So if the method exists, then we want to call self dot sprite dot update and pass in the game object end. So let's see what happens when we run that. Attempt to perform arithmetic on field current sprite a nil value on line 18 of sprite sheet. Let's take a look. Self dot current sprite equals self dot current sprite. So that should Ah, yes, we need to call update as an instance method with a colon, if we do that. Okay, now we have our adventurer running very, very fast. So we need a way of slowing down our animation because um, the game updates so quickly that 
changing our f or changing the current sprite once per update is uh, is just too fast for us. So instead, we need some kind of animation count or yeah, what should we call it? Something to do with a number of uh, of or for how long we want a frame of the sprite or a sprite to remain on the screen. So we'll just call it animation speed for now. And we will say probably 30, yeah, say 15 frames to start with. So if we remember a frame in our game is 1 over 60 roughly uh, because our logic updates every, um, every 60th of a second. So we'll say 15 times 1 over 60. Um, and rather than speed, let's just call this uh, frame. So this is how long one frame should be. And we need a um, some kind of frame count as well, which will start off on 0. And now when we call update, we want to say self dot frame count equals self dot frame count plus game dot dt. So dt is just the time it takes for an update to happen because um, updates don't always take the same amount of time to happen. So this will just smooth out our animation for us. Self dot frame count equals self dot frame count plus game dot dt. Then we can say if self dot frame count is equal to or greater than self dot what did we call it frame. So let's change frame to be frame time just to be nice and uh, obvious self dot frame time then we will advance the frames and the other thing we want to do when we advance the frames is set our frame count back to zero self dot frame count equals zero let's uh, give it a try Oops. then expected near equals on line 20 greater than or equal to great there we go so now we have um, a reasonably timed animation we can obviously tweak the numbers to get it a bit nicer but we have something that looks okay there's a couple of tasks left for us to do or there's actually um, there's always a lot left for us to do but um, specifically around animation this time, we need to change the direction of the player um, based on where they're moving. And it would also be nice to change the kinds of animation we use and only play the animation when the player is moving. Also, if I just turn on debug mode, so if we go into main and set debug to true, um, we can see that we've doubled the size of our players hitbox or bounding box and that's because we use the image inside of a sprite to work out the bounding box so that's also something we will need to fix but these are all things for later episodes i'm going to wrap up here hope you're enjoying the series so far uh, please if you um, if you are ask questions reach out uh, it always makes it more interesting if i can answer specific questions in an episode and if you've got a few seconds then um, a like or a subscribe really does help me out. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.